Well, there was plenty to do in Framingham in the first weekend of October, and if you came through the center, you may have seen the white tents, men with rifles, ladies in hoop skirts, and a cannon. This was the History Center's Living History Civil War Encampment. The two-day event was organized to mark the 150th anniversary of the end of the Civil War. Despite the wet weather and chilly temperatures, these hardy reenactors came out to help spark people's curiosity about history. Soldiers from the Union and Confederate armies did drills with President Abraham Lincoln watching on. Visitors saw a working telegraph, a blacksmith shop, and there was a ladies' fashion show describing the elaborate dress of the day. The historic Village Hall was ablaze Saturday night with a Civil War dance, the only ticketed event of the weekend. Sunday morning brought a grave side service honoring Framingham's own Civil War hero, General George Gordon, and a commemorative service at the Edgel Grove Cemetery Chapel. Framingham gave a lot to the war between the states, something to celebrate and remember. I think it's very important in Framingham that we do this because Framingham has a huge, played a huge part in the Civil War and that Framingham itself sent one quarter of the male population to the Civil War. Um, we have an amazing building, Edgel Library, which is our Civil War Memorial, which is a very important building and it is important for us to remember how they felt about those men when they went away so many years ago. Um, we feel that we want to show people what it was that, that it was like so many years ago. Um, we have living history, people here showing what life was like on a daily basis. We've got the Confederate Army here, we've got the Union Army here, and we have uh, settlers, or excuse me, settlers, or shopping, if, if you will, and they all give you the idea of what it would have been like for people during that time period. General Gordon grew up here in Framingham, went to the academy right across the street here, went on to West Point, graduated in the class of 1846. When the war broke out, uh, he immediately uh, joined the uh, volunteer militia here in Massachusetts and raised the first regiment, the second mass regiment. And they went on to fame and glory throughout the Civil War. The United States Christian Commission was commissioned or formed after the first battle or the only battle of Gettysburg in July of 1863. You can imagine a situation of 47,000 dead and wounded laying on the field in a town of 2,000 people is bad enough, but then you complicate that with the idea of not one of those individuals had any form of ident identification on them at all. And so the Christian Commission was formed to relieve the suffering after the Battle of Gettysburg. As adjutant, what I do is all the paperwork for the battalion. Morning reports come in. If this was real life, I would take care of any sort of uh, uh, casualty reports, KIA, kill, killed in action, uh, effects would be given to me, and I would turn them over. Uh, if this was a real active campaign, we would not have these kinds of tents. We would have what we have on our back only. But because there's a lull in the fighting and there's a little bit of uh, inclement weather, the wagon train has caught up with us and therefore we have all this canvas around. So I, I'm working with apprentices trying to teach them the trade. So a blacksmith would follow the army around. The, the artillery would have a blacksmith attached to them to refit their cannons and all the hardware. The cavalry would have a blacksmith to retrieve their horses. Blacksmith pretty much make anything that the army needed to keep, keep, keep going. Everything you can see in the shop is stuff that could be used around the camp. There's utensils to cook with, tripods, screwdrivers to take your guns apart, hooks to hang stuff from, from the ridge pole, lantern hooks. Any, anything that the Army needed or anybody nearby would need, I would make. I worked at Old Sturbridge Village, and that was my first experience in living history, and that was in 1983. And I was there for many years. After I left there, that's when I became 
interested in the Civil War and the living history community. And I think it, for both of us, it started with having a passion for history and loving history anyway, and then finding out that you could be a living historian part-time on the weekend, mm -hmm. which is, who knew? I teach high school history, and I love the fact that people will learn and they enjoy living history. And it's just a different way to teach and it's a different way to learn. It's just very interactive, it's hands-on. I uh, enjoyed reviewing the troops. I uh, also enjoyed talking to the public as they came through. Uh, they had a lot of questions for me, which was uh, challenging sometimes, but uh, also I was able to inform them on some things and perhaps correct uh, some misunderstandings uh, about things. What did you think of the dances? It's great. <laughs> I'm not much of a dancer myself, but I enjoy watching. It was a crazy day today, a lot of wind, a lot of rain, yeah. and I just am so happy that everybody persevered and the weather cleared up some. One of my volunteers at the History Center, Ruth Robertson, made this dress for me, and um, I am not a Civil War reenactor, but we did the encampment in 2012, so she made it for me for that, and I've worn it a lot since because we do a lot of Civil War activities. Oh, this you, is so important for me because wow. I feel it is the best way for people to learn about this time period. There's a huge difference between sitting in a classroom and learning from a book or hearing a lecture versus walking into a place like this.